Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. I have the evil bald ninja who is the masked singer today with his uh, beanie and his goggles on. We have Jen who's going to come on and do a second appearance with us. She is absolutely amazing. We're going to be talking about, you know, everything, how to be motivated in the morning, you know, you know, good routines. Right now, everything is a fucking dumpster fire shit show of 2020 and we need a little positivity. So we're going to bring it in hot and heavy. Uh, I am wearing an anonymous mask, which is my private protest to life at this moment. Gene, what are you wearing for all the people that are listening at home? It's a Versace style <laughs> sleeping mask. Oh, so, what shit. oh, wait, hold on, what? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, are we live? Yes, we're live. Who, who are you, sir? Because I, I can't see you. I wasn't sleeping behind my snow goggles. <laughs> of course you weren't. I promise I wasn't. He has to uh, dig out of Philly. This is 30 something degrees here. It sucks. The weather sucks. I'm all bundled up and I don't have any heat. Oh, man, that sucks. You know, that really sucks. But you know what? It's almost 60 degrees here. Going to be almost 70 today with bright blue skies and palm trees here in California. Jen, I'll let you, Jen, I'll let you say to him what I want to say to him. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Yeah, she did it. <laughs> she done did it. So, Jen, tell, tell everybody a little bit about you, where you're from, what you do, your podcast, kind of yeah, just kind man. of give people the landscape of kind of who you are. All right. Well, Jen Mertland from Cincinnati, Ohio. And um, our podcast is Toe to Toe Podcast. We're actually changing the name to Realtor Fight Club. Is that oh, it? That's nice. a great name, right? Yes, yeah, I dig that. Yeah. yeah. Until we get in trouble, then we're going to change it to Real A Tour with a capital A Fight Club. Oh, my God. <laughs> you don't think that's funny? I think it's hilarious, but yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping we get in trouble. But um, then in real wait, estate, wait, 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 before, wait, hold on. Before we get further, what what's the premise of it? What's going to happen? Oh, you mean in the podcast? Yeah. So what we do is Monica Weekly and I, who's been on the show a few times, mm -hmm. we take a real estate topic like should your should you encourage the buyer to write a letter to the seller with their offer, and then I'll be like, um, hell no, and she'll be like, of course, because she's a lot nicer. And we battle about it. And then I get a guest like Greg has been on before. What were we battling about when you were on, Greg? Do you remember? Cold calling. It was cold calling versus yeah. like marketing. Yeah. So um, we battle about it. Then we have a guest as like a tiebreaker. It's pretty fun. It can get really heated because I'm pretty passionate about certain topics. I, it, it was a lot of fun, and guys, I, I completely encourage you to go uh, take a look at this show. Uh, they they do just a wonderful, wonderful job on the production of it. But today, um, I, Jen, I want to jump in with you and just kick this thing off because we're just going to crush skulls and kick people in the taints. Um, you know, the, there it is. 2020, 2020 has been a dumpster fire. We all can agree with that. Yeah. Some good ways, some bad ways, but emotionally, mentally, psychologically. It's a roller coaster, for sure. It's, it's an up and down. I mean, in California, we're locking down again. So after this show, I'm going to go get a haircut probably for the last time this year. Fuck face it, asshole, you know, governor. Oh. Um, but you can always move. Uh, well, that's a behind the scenes conversation. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, what, what, move for four months now. Uh, longer than that, but yeah. my, my the thing is, is that a lot of people are struggling with mental stability, you yeah, know, positivity sure. and stuff like that, and routines. So a lot of us have fallen off routines because guess what? A lot of folks, we don't have to get up and go to work anymore. Well, we have to go to work, but we're not going up and going to an office, yeah, right? Yeah. It's right. totally different. So, I mean, walk us through, Jen, because um, I know that you're an incredibly powerful personality. You're very positive. You you always make me laugh and smile. What are some of the routines and things that you're doing that they're, that are keeping you moving on a daily, monthly, weekly basis? Well, um, I think the biggest thing is even though you're right. So like everybody's routine, if they had one, but let's be honest, <laughs> most real estate agents don't even have the routine. No. So, but let's just pretend in our little fantasy unicorn world that they do have a routine. So we just need to alter it like a little bit, right? So if you have kids at home and you're like also their teacher and things like that, like make it, your routine cannot be the same. So if before you started at nine, but now you have to be with the kids at nine, don't try to like overwork yourself. Mm hmm that's like the biggest thing. Like lit actually the real underlying, the netting it out is living in reality with your current situation. Like what but, is it really? 
Right. And I think a lot of times people are having a hard time adjusting because our realities are shifting so effing fast. I mean, I go to Safeway, which is my supermarket here in in Northern California. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my girlfriend and I always being very conscientious about, you know, in regards to bringing my reusable bags and everything else. And then one day they said, no, you can't bring them in the store anymore. They literally made you take them back out. Then they're like, okay, you can bring them back in. And and then like every day. You can have them, but you you can't touch the counters. I'm like, right. you fucktards. Get it right. fucking straight. What do you want me to fucking do? And but that's they're, they're- like all the more reason, though, to like bring it down to the the thing about being a real estate agent is we forget. Like, mm. I used to say, there's only three rules of being an agent: be nice, don't be a douche, and answer your phone. But I realized <laughs> it's not just being nice. You know, it's it's about like honoring your word. So it's honoring your word to yourself first, and right. bringing it down to like the most minute thing and we think we love to help people and that's why we're a realtor you know what i mean but that's stupid you like you have to make money too or everybody nobody gets fed right right Right. so really it what is what is the most dollar producing activity that you do as a real estate agent and i'm gonna here to tell you that is generating new leads do you agree I, I agree. And Gene, this is where you're going to weigh in because you, you generate leads for a living for people. I mean, it, w- this is the greatest conversation ever for, for you and for me, but what would you say would be the number one thing a real estate agent can do to generate leads on a daily basis? Right now? Yeah. yeah. And I, cause I say that, I say that meaning this is different than it was six months ago, right? Like I have found for myself that the greatest lead generator comes from the process of a positive interrupt. So positive interrupt, describe mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So pick your platform, right? So for, we're talking digital now for just for, for the time being, but pick your platform and think about the content that you see that scrolls through in front of your face while you're on that platform. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, California needs to break off the coast. COVID's killing all the people. It's not people are arguing about whether it's the flu or not. Right. Boom, boom, boom. Right. Now, here I step in with my positive, powerful message and my hype Mm -hmm. speech. And if you need help, call me and I break open my calendar for you for Superpower Coffee Hour. You remember that, Greg? Oh, I do. I actually actually do. What is that? So I, all right, so we'll dig into it a little bit. So back in when this coronavirus first started, you probably have seen some of Greg's hashtag challenge to lead live videos. Mm -hmm. So we started that over here on the East Coast. And basically it was just a, challenge somebody challenged me and then i challenged greg to go live for whatever every day for 30 days in a row and it could be a minute 30 seconds eight minutes depending on what you were talking about and for me it was never about lead gen it wasn't it wasn't about building a business hi i'm the marketer call me for your but it was never that it was all Mm -hmm. goofy interrupts me with snow goggles on and let me listen to my favorite music one night i reviewed a beer we were cooking in my kitchen i showed the recipe like and i found out over time that people were really happy that yeah. there was a positive interrupt in their lives. So they would go through and see all this crap that was negatively impacting their psyche and they'd see my goofy face. Right. And then they would yeah. go, let they me laugh. see what the video is doing. Yeah. Right. Right. And the amount of conversations that I generated from that was, it was stupid. So, and I started to like really look into it. I've been talking about this for the last four months now. And I'm this, this is actually the message I'm carrying with me. I did a, uh, um, a video with 86 EXP agents on two days ago. Mm-hmm. And the, the reaction and interaction that we got from what we're, what we're talking about right now was so talk about positive energy. Yeah. It, it's still going. Like I log on to Facebook every day and I'm watching these guys and girls post their one minute video about how well their day started. And it's not BS stuff. It's like, no, it's like real, real but I think world too, what you're talking about is like, people have all that negative energy and it's because, and and it makes them feel bad, but not because of what's, what's being said is negative, but what they think about what's being said. So like they're either worried about maybe what's going to happen and it causes like anxiety or like whatever. And what you're doing is being like, Hey, come back. Like it's fine. Like you got to still cook dinner. You got to still make funny faces. Like you, I mean, you have a choice. You can either like laugh, or you can be worried about something that you don't even know is going to happen or not. You and don't know. I, and I, I, you, you don't know. And, and even still further, even all the news that you're reading and you're, and you're consuming online, you don't know. Like, you, is it real? Did somebody just make it up? Is it clickbait? Like, they all made it up. 
Yeah, who knows, right? But here's what is not real. I'm an asshole. And when you right. see me online, you're going to giggle. That's, yeah. what's, that's what's real, right? right. Like, and, and I think people appreciate that and it's different. So like the thing I said to my crew yesterday was be different and just, mm. just stand out, not in a goofy way, but just be away from yeah. the grain, which is bringing yeah. everybody down and crushing their psyche, right? Like right. be the guy that's at, sometimes it's corny, right? Like nobody wants to see me doing butterfly pull-ups at the gym. Except there are two people on there that are like, if that fat bastard can do it, I could do it too. And then they go to the gym. You're inspirational, Dean. You know what I mean? Like, so, but so I'm I'm being a little bit different, and it's working in my in my favor. Well, no, it, no, I, I agree with you as well. I mean, a couple of months ago, <clears throat> I was a Saturday afternoon. My girlfriend was at work, and I was sitting around the house being a fat bitch. And all of a sudden, I'm like, okay. I got to get the fuck up and I got to go and go do something, you know, healthy for myself. So I went for a run and I was mm, two miles into my run and I'm regretting every single step I've taken so far. And so I did a After quick video. Miles, about, well, I usually run about four to five miles. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I, I posted a quick little story on Instagram. They shifted it over to Facebook and I just said, oh my God, this sucks. Why am I doing this? I have to stay true to myself. Well, wish you guys a blessed, powerful day, and I'll I'll see you guys later. And I got so many DMs on that going like, thank you for the inspiration. Thank you mm -hmm. for this. Thank you for that. And I'm going like, just from like the chunky oh. dude going for a run, <laughs> and Jen lost her life. That was um, funny. That was weird looking. <laughs> that was, it was like a light bulb one. But to what you're saying is true. And I think like doing those challenges that you're talking about, it's like you put that in your routine. Like, okay, I'm going to post something on Facebook. I'm going to go live every day, even if it's 30 seconds or 20 minutes or whatever, like doing that every day, even if you don't feel like doing it, like I'm going to run every day, like whatever it is, even mm. if you don't feel like doing it, eventually the routine will pull you, pull you through and you and what you feel will be out of the way because you'll be so used to doing it. Like how many times in the last, how many ever years have you woken up and not brushed your teeth? Uh, a lot. Don't answer that, Greg. Dean. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Me? No, no, no. I, twice in the No, because you night. have the routine of like brushing your teeth. So it's the same thing. If you have the routine of doing something silly every day or being present or taking a run or like whatever it is, you know, well, it'll just pull you through. You know what else I think too? I find this funny. Like I talk about this a lot. Women are so much better than men. True. All right, everybody. Is. Thank you for showing up. We're, the show has ended. Women are better than men are out. Goodbye. Listen, here's here's the thing. If there if there were only men on this planet, there would be no more planet. And if there were only women on this planet, they'd be just fine. Right? They'd True. be catcalling at each other, but it would be just fine. Uh, but the reason why I say that is because I feel like well, the one thing I'm missing that I wish I had is they, they you know how they talk about that. There's a there's some kind of um a chemical that's released when a, when a woman gives birth. And apparently from what I read is that it, it, it makes them forget the pain. Otherwise oh. they, otherwise they would never do it again. Right. Yeah. So like makes sense. I'm constantly looking for that. Like just take the gym, for example, like I get, I get to the gym. Are you going like, to compare the gym to giving birth? No, 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 no. You're going to get so much hate mail. No, 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 no. I'm, what I mean is, the hard things in life, I wish I had that release of chemical. Yeah. Like, I wish I had that, the superpower. The I dopamine? Say, What's that? The dopamine? I don't, no, I don't think so. I think I you get the same release if you, like, snort a line of Coke or something like that. Should no? I try that before the gym? <laughs> Which we do not condone in any way, shape, or form on this show. We are just merely discussing chemical things. I would help with my weight loss, I think. Probably. No, no. Yeah, you would meet. We'll talk about this later <laughs> off, off air. Uh, <laughs> But the know, it, in or whatever. I, I think, Gene, what you're looking for is, and I, I don't know, I'll ask Jackie when she gets back from work today, uh, but I mean, you're looking for the happiness, you know, you know Gene, the happiness uh, okay. you know, hormone, because you, you go through something hard, you have to be forged through fire. That's what make you, makes you the strongest. And then you mm -hmm. want to do it again. And a lot of us right now are losing that forging through fire. We'd rather just sit there and eat bonbons, sit on the couch, you know, Netflix our, our, our brains out, go boating, drink Bud Lights, Coors Lights, whatever your flavor is. But we're, we're, Obviously we're, like, 
cloth, Greg. Like, oh, uh, yeah. Ain't no laws when you're drinking the cloth. Oh, right. I Bad mean, Greg. come on. Bad Greg. I'm sorry. I misspoke. Do you think, though, a lot of people say, like, if you if you don't have that, then it's because you're, well, they say, like, your why is not strong enough. But, like, whatever true. version of that is, do you, do you think that's true? It is. I mean, I, I and this is something I've been really honest with a lot of people in my life with, and I'll share this publicly with everybody who's going to be listening and watching this. You know, I've been waking up every morning lately, and I have been looking for every reason not to go to work. Yeah. Because I'm I'm getting discouraged and I'm looking for that happiness vibe, right? And and I and I go do I go to work? Yes. Do I get my shit handled? Absolutely. But I'm looking for the reason not to go to work. And I think you gotta listen okay. to your podcast you guys did with David Green the other day. Oh, that guy's awesome. Go re-listen to that. He talks about that. Oh, I know, I know. I, I I have so many amazing human beings that have been on this show that listen to this show and that reach out and everything else. I have zero reason not to be, be excited, but for whatever reason, the last couple of weeks I've just been really disheartened. And I think that a lot of people might be feeling that way. So I would, Jen, I would love to get your thoughts and theories. And we do, yes, do we joke a lot on this show? Absolutely. That's yeah. kind of pretty much the premise of this. <laughs> um, but I mean, we, but there's also a lot of honesty in regards to. Uh, where people's mindsets are and, mm -hmm. and, you know, how to help folks and how to help people get out of the bed and how to, yeah. you know, I, I, fuck, man, I listen to, you know, your podcast, I listen to a lot of other people's podcasts and it really inspires me and encourages me and, 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 and really gets me going. So, I mean, if you were to give some pieces of advice for folks for morning routines and for positivity, mm -hmm. um, where would you start and then walk us through a process that you're, that you're dealing with or working with right now? Um, right that would be something that people could use and, and be happy, sure. be excited, especially in the holidays, man. It's a shit show dumpster fire of 2020. And now we have the, the holidays coming up. Then with all these fuck stick, you know, governors, they're telling everyone to stay home, not socialize, don't see your family. And so people's mental, you know, yeah, mindsets are in a, in a negative place to change that for everybody. You know, oh, help okay. Us you ready? Ta -da. Oh. No, I think like, yeah, right. I think what you alluded to is it's, I call it like building your bunker. So when you get for me and for me, it's the morning, like in the morning, that's where everything begins. And even if, even if based on because of how you're um, how everything's working for COVID or whatever, right? Even if mm. your morning is only like 30 minutes, then take that and make that your bunker. And so for most people, and this is like every business book, even from like the beginning of time, it's like you wake up, you do like some type of like meditation or journaling or both or some type of something like, there you go, right? Like I haven't really gotten into the journaling thing, but like definitely some meditation and for me, like I just started with meditation and the thing that I really like about it and the thing that I've learned is I realize that what I'm feeling is, is not who I am. Mm. Right. Mm. So like if I wake up and like, and honestly, I haven't woken up in a bad mood in like kind of a long time, but sometimes I wake up sad. So like, then I realize, okay, it, do I have a reason to be sad? Am I, is there something happening that, is there like something that is sad actually happening? Or is it just like a, the way that I feel about like a situation or what I'm, I don't know if I'm explaining it right. But like, no, no, I, 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 I completely understand where you're coming from. And one of the things, and I, and I woke up and I used to do this as well. I used to, and I, and I I'm sorry, I used to, I, I, I used to wake up and, and, and ask the same, same questions of like, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I'm so bummed or right. blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing. You woke up, hey. you're breathing. And I would say to myself three times, I would say, today's going to be an amazing day. And then when I, when I woke up, when I rubbed a little bit out of my eyes, I'd be like, today is going to be an amazing day. Yeah. And then right, I swing my feet out of the bed and I would shout, today's going to be an amazing day. And I get up and, and I roll through the rest of the day. And it's an incredible, our good friend, Jake Wolf, who's our co-host on the Wednesday shows on the marketing round table uh, for Real Estate Uncensored. Um, he gets up and he literally growls like that's awesome. He growled he and I'm like, like a release. I'm like, Jake, why do you growl? He's like, just letting the world know I'm here. And I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> in the I like it. There, there you go. <laughs> but that's too. I mean, saying like the affirmation or putting on your favorite song or like something that gets your mind right. You know, mm -hmm. and not only do we get to wake up every day, but as real estate agents, we get to positively 
we have a choice. We can either make money or we can not make money. And do you know how many people don't have a choice? Lots. So many people. We're yep. smart enough to do it. We have the ability to do it. I mean, and it's possible, right? It's insane. This is insane. It's an insane gift that we have. And it, it, on it, people like you. I mean, not they, everybody they, likes me. Or, <laughs> but I don't believe that. I don't, I don't believe that. I think Jen's full of shit on that one. She, you know, she's a lovable human being who's beautiful, intelligent, and kind, and you know, okay. and, and aggressive. And there's nothing please, not to like about please. you. No. Okay, <laughs> I'll stop. I'll stop. Okay, okay. Keep, 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 keep it coming. Keep it coming. <laughs> but but see, here's the thing: most folks do not think like this. Why? Because they listen to outside influences when they have okay. to understand it's 400 million to one that you're going to end up on this planet. Because when mom and dad oh did, my the, God. did the ugly, you know, bumping. Oh, not... yeah. Oh, I, I can go into well, details. On that. Yeah, let's oh, not, God. shall we? But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You guys have already won the race. You're already a celebrity. Oh, you are the already... smartest one out of all of them. Can you? Sometimes I look at people and I'm like, damn, really? <laughs> I thought this was supposed to be a positive show. Oh, that is a positive <laughs> that I'm really sure that I'm like, damn, really? I, I thought you were talking about me. I was just kind of like, you. okay, that, that's cool. You're Whatever. Fast. I'm talking about other people. But, but you know, honestly, guys, look, y y you were the fastest swimmer. Like, hey. you, you were the winner of however many those little things were, you know, that were doing their thing. Um, but it, it, when it comes to like you, you, you getting down on yourself, you have to understand that you're uniquely special. You're powerful. You're creative. You're incredibly interesting. You're, you, you have skills that you don't even know that you can even tap into yet. All you have to do is reach out. But yet we always focus on the negativity because why? Why does the newspapers always sell death, divorce, stock market crashing, murder, rape and everything else? It sells our okay. brains like to think about this. But if you keep in mind of the fact that you are unique, you are mm -hmm. powerful, beautiful, handsome, and incredible. And you tell yourself that every morning. And I do tell myself that every morning. I wake up and I rub the <laughs> shit. I rub the yeah, I rub the shit out of my <laughs> eyes. And I'm like, you are a powerful, intelligent human being. People love and respect you, and you have value to bring to other people that you don't even know yet. You're going to go out there and change yep. lives, and 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 have a conversation with someone that that can bring light to their eyes. And I'm like, oh, okay. there you go. You're Here I go. In your step. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out the door, but we don't do that as a society. And so, Jen, why do you think people don't do that? Oh, why do they not do that? I I think I don't know. I don't know why you have a, ch I don't, I think some people don't think they have a choice, but something occurred to me while you were saying that is there are some people that if you haven't like thought positively about yourself, maybe you don't know where to start, mm -hmm. but can you think of somebody who does like you, who's your friend, mm -hmm. like your actual friend and maybe ask them what they think about you and you can start there. Good Be point. Careful. Be careful. What? Be careful, I said, because it's, if I know if with my friends, if I don't preface it with, listen, I'm having a bad time today and I need some right. affirmation that I'm a good dude. What do you think of me? I'll get the exact opposite of what that's I want. That's you, answer. right. You know what I mean. <laughs> well, that's just guys. I mean, it, you know you have good friends when they call you a shit stick and an asshole. You yeah. Know? You know, that's when you're like, okay, you're my homie. Cool. Yeah, cool. But I mean, the number one thing is if you don't want to see positivity in yourself, you don't believe in yourself at the moment, here's the easiest thing to do, guys. Go out there and compliment five people on random things you see on you a go. daily basis and watch them light up. You mm -hmm. know, I can say, you know what, Jen? I love your hair today. It is absolutely mm -hmm. spectacular. You. Jean, right you look balder than ever. I really enjoy the sheen on your head. It is fantastic. All right, that's two. I think this could be a fun exercise. Give me three more things that you would say to somebody on <laughs> the street. Okay, uh, you or other or other? No, people? no, no, just random people. Okay, you know what? You can you can walk up to someone in, in your supermarket and just and if you're sitting there waiting, you know, compliment them on their coat or their pants or their shoes or whatever else you know, order you know the food they have. Like you know what? I've eaten that. I, have you had that before? It is fantastic. That's a wonderful choice. Or if you see someone, you know, uh, uh, you know, walking around town, you know, just compliment them. Like I, I, whenever I see people out with their animals, I say, you have got one of the best looking animals I've ever seen. What is his or her name? I love that. Oh my God. This is blah, blah, blah. This is fluffy face. I'm like, hi, fluffy face. 
And, you know, I talk to them about it for half a second, then I, you know, go away. But what I'm doing is this, is I'm just bringing joy, light, power, and love to the world by one comment after another, because we have negativity, we have Mm -hmm. positivity. Mm -hmm. Guys, it is your choice on which way you want to look at it. And like, here's a good example. That's where it starts though. You have to know, like really, really, really know that you have a choice. And just because even if your first like instinct is a negative know that really when you choose it's your second thought it's that one that you chose not the instant it is and that and that comes all the way back to real estate when it comes to working with your clients look you're gonna have some fuck face assholes that you're gonna work with Never. but here, here oh, no. all fat. what are you estate? talking about no that's only california <laughs> oh god he's such a hater i know i hate california god you really hate oh california. god but here's the thing, like when you have a client and I, and I had a client like this, I just closed a $2.1 million deal and I found it off market, the whole nine yards. You guys have heard me talk about this before. Um, and this guy was a serious grade A fucking cocksucker. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I literally put 2 million liquid dollars into his bank account and he was giving me grief the entire time. And I decided to shift my point of view with him. I said, you know what? I'm blessed to be in this opportunity. I appreciate, you know, the, 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 this, the right to operate, you know, to, you know, to represent you. And I, and I want to just offer my best opportunity for you. And I shifted every negative comment he would say to me. And I would say, you know what? I really appreciate your input. Yeah. Here's where I'm going to come from. How can I assist you? Nice. And, it, and, and how it, did that change the, the interaction? Yeah. Right. It's crazy. But that happens degrees. when we're cold calling. Like when mm-hmm. I cold call and you know, I mean, they don't know you. They can only like hear you. Right. Right. And so, you know, when you're getting all that junk back, it's like they're being jerks or whatever. And then I'm like, wait a second. It's because whatever I'm putting out there. Mm, yep. So like, I will literally stop. Even if my 50 minutes is not up, I will literally stop. I will go look in the mirror and I'll be like, well, for me, I'm just like, stop it. <laughs> like, just stop it. Like, and laugh and be like, you know, that you're getting whatever you're giving. So mm. stop it. And what do you really want here? You know, mm-hmm. and then you get back on the phone and it's fine. Have you have you ever heard of the sales uh, theory match and mirror? Yep. Mirror match, yeah, for sure. Have, and have you ever seen it actually executed by somebody on stage? Yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, yep. I I saw this incredible uh, display of it one time where this guy who was on stage called up a me- member from the audience who he didn't know. Yeah, and he, and they didn't say two words, and it went from him physically pushing the guy on stage to them dancing at the end of it. Oh my literally. God. It was so wild to watch. So he, he said, I'm, I'm not going to say anything. I don't even know the guy's name. Guy comes up, he puts his hand up, guy puts his hand up, his other hand, the other hand, right? So he's so the they're standing time like they didn't say anything. Not one word. So he starts pushing his hand. Guy starts pushing him back the other way. They start going like this. And eventually he drops his hands. The other guy did too. And they end up like chest to chest. He grabs him and they start dancing around the stage. <laughs> and he was like, your, your human nature wants to give back what you're getting. Right. Mm. So like, you know, think about two guys. I, got to do it, it was, it, I wish, I wish you could have seen it. Cause I don't do it justice by explaining it. Right. Mm-hmm. So actually watch it. Cause first you're like, I'm like, what are these two idiots doing? You know, like what, what are they, what's going on here? And then by the end of it, I was like, wow, that was actually pretty amazing. Like you can see your natural reaction. Yeah. Is to, is to counter whatever's coming at you physically and mentally. Right. Yeah. So when you talk about somebody acting that way on a cold call, it's possible that it is the way that you approached it. No, it's well, absolutely. Uh, it's not only possible, but that's very likely. You yeah. know, I I've had a lot of interactions like Jen and I, you and I are, are big cold callers. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, and I, and I got to the point and I'm at the point when I have people that come at me with negativity, I come back at them with positivity and it diffuses the situation immediately. Yeah. Like I had this one guy, old cranky dude. He was hilarious. I love he, those people. He, he, he was just griping at me. Get off the phone, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I said, you know what, sir? It's a fantastic idea. Why don't we do this? Let's when they come a, over, let's have a let's have a hang up contest. Who goes first? <laughs> and then he's like, "You haven't hung up." I'm like, "You haven't either." What's going on? <laughs> do you? I'm like, "So do you want me to come over and give you a hug?" And then he's like, oh. "Go away!" And clicks, and I'm just like, "He he 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 he." 
Because, you know, I took a negative situation, I turned it into a positive one because what I, I wasn't rude. I, I didn't do anything that was not professional. I had a little bit of fun with somebody and hopefully I put a smile on their face. And so when you guys are out there doing calls, you're sending mailers, you're doing you know videos, you're doing stories on Instagram and Facebook, you're, you're posting stuff on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. uh, all this other stuff. And people don't respond or they respond negatively, negatively to, to what you're doing. Just understand that, that that's their reality it's not right. your reality it's their reality and it's not your job to change their reality you're only responsible for yourself and yeah. how you interpret what they do that's that's what makes the difference because well, yeah. you can respond to them negatively and then it like perpetuates it or you cannot respond or you can respond i mean like whatever right well a lot of us we what we do is we hold everything in a fist we try to hold on to everything so tight. So it's our emotions, it's our thoughts, it's our relationship, it's our business, it's our clients, whatever it is. Here's the most powerful thing I've ever done in my entire life, and it's changed everything that I touch, is that I lay my hand out flat, mm -hmm. and I let everything sit on the palm of my hand, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and, and everything else. Mm -hmm. And so that if it's gonna stay there, it's gonna stay there for a reason. If it's gonna fly away, it might come back. If it's gonna go away, it's gonna go away. Wow. But I'm not gonna be able to force it to stay there. And, I, and I'm thankful for everything that shifts in my life. Now, why would I be thankful for that? It's because you know what? And this is the one phrase, the absolute one phrase I repeat to myself all the time. I'm exactly where I need to be at this exact moment for yep. the exact right reason. Yep. And so if a relationship ends, not knock on wood that, you know, my girlfriend and I were doing very well, we're, there's no problems there. But I mean, if I lose a client or if I don't get a lead or if I don't work with somebody, you know what? That's okay. Right. Be it is thankful. okay. It's fine. Go get another one. Yeah, go get another one. fine. You're where you need to be in life. And God, people just think that like they're deserving of X, Y, and Z. But the only thing you're deserving of is what you've worked for and be ecstatic about where you are. Because guys, the majority of the world makes $25,000 a year or less. I mean, anyone who makes over that, you're in the top 1%. I mean, you're making a lot of cash. Be thankful for that. Be thankful right. you have a dog, a husband, a wife, a, sp a partner. You Whatever. know, think. Be thank thankful that you have a beautiful girl, Jen, on this show and a great yeah. bald ninja as my co-host. I mean, <laughs> it's very simple stuff to be thankful for. Yeah, and I think like that bringing it back to what we were, we were talking about, it's just starting off like right away, whatever it is, like affirmations, gratitude, you know, journaling, whatever it is to put good stuff in your mind from the beginning, it will take you through the entire day. And so, then step two is starting with your most important thing first, which is how we kind of got on this topic, which is lead generation. So walk me, walk, mm -hmm. me down that, walk me down that a little bit for, for starting the morning off. So you're going to be grateful for stuff and then you're going to do your best thing first or your hardest thing first. What do you want to do? No, I want to do the most dollar producing thing first. So as a real estate agent, we only have five jobs. So it's generating new business, following up, lead follow up, uh, going on appointments, role play and practicing or some version of that, and then negotiating contracts. Anything outside of those five, it, it, you shouldn't be doing it. You, mm. you get paid too much as a realtor to be doing that stuff. Mm. Okay? So out of those five, <laughs> okay. huh? I said, you said, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. So out of those five, the most important one is new business lead generation. If you do not have new business, you do not have a business for very long. Mm -hmm. So right. talk about, let's talk about lead generation. How, what are you going to do for lead generation? What would, what would be something that you would do on a daily basis? So it depends on how you get, how you want to get your leads and how your business set, is set up. So first you need to decide, are you going to talk to people you know, or people you don't know? Mm -hmm. My preference is people I don't know. So that requires cold calling. Mm -hmm. in general. I mean, you could do it other ways. Like when I first started, I went door knocking because I didn't have Vulcan and I wasn't a licensed realtor. I was a wholesaler. So I would mm -hmm. door knock the notice of defaults. But like whatever you're, let's just say you're a realtor and it's cold calling. Okay. So you have a system. Now the best time to cold call, and these are just best practices. The best time is eight o'clock in the morning. The second best time is now. <laughs> right. But like there's <laughs> rules of thumb. So it's like eight or nine o'clock. You start. It's really better to start at eight around lunchtime. And then like after three, I mean, there's studies on this. Yep. So you have to choose if you're going to do that. If you're going to cold call, you have to look and say, okay, can I really work that schedule that is required 
for the success that I'm looking for. If you're not going to cold call, let's say you're going to do um, people you know, I mean, you'll have to go to somebody else. I don't really know how to do that. But like you would maybe write notes or set lunch appointments. And if you're going to set lunch appointments and coffee appointments and you like stack them you, or mm-hmm. Zoom or whatever, right? Like even on Zoom, you can stack them because then you can let people into your Zoom meeting while the other person is still there and be like, oh my gosh, do you guys know each other? You're both fast clients. You both live in the same part of town. You both have a five-year-old son, like whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's finding the connection points uh, between people and then being the connector. I Mm -hmm. I literally do that every single day is I connect people on a consistent basis. I say, you know what, Jen? There's a guy you should really meet. His name is Gene Volpe. Um, he is a master marketer and he absolutely crushes. And for what you're trying to do and grow your business, you know, would you mind if I could get him on the call really quickly if he has time and you know, I can have you guys do a personal introduction? Nice. And then you're like, oh my God, yeah. Yeah, that's so nice. Dude, I, I, I will right. tell you, you are, I'm, I, fancy myself a connector too, but you are actually one of the best. Like people, <laughs> you talk about it on the show. But I'll literally, he forgets sometimes I'm on the East Coast. So I'll get a call at like 940. He's like, <laughs> you got two minutes? I'm going to bridge you in with Jen. And I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Dude. Yeah, I'm sure. like, you know, I'm sure. I'm sitting in my underwear. Everybody's in bed. Don't worry about it. Let's go. But, but honestly, how many times have you done that to me? Oh, I've done it to you dozens of times. Yeah. And, and I love it. But, but I do love that. I love the fact that you're always like, wait. So I just met Jen. I heard three things she said. Yeah, I got to send her over to, to Bob, you know, from Remax for whatever oh, reason. Oh, fuck him. Oh, <laughs> did it, oh, so not Jen, Bob. Jen, not Bob. Bob. Come on, man. We know what he did to us last time. Never Bob. <laughs> Never Bob. Never but Bob. But actually, Gene, that <laughs> goes back to what Greg was saying before. Like, if you're in like a funk about like your mind and it's just not getting right and you just can't think of anything positive, think about somebody else for a change other than yourself. And all of Ooh. a sudden, it will probably shift. Mm-hmm. I, l- I actually like that. I mean, if you get like, if you actually let's see, if you make a conscious effort and, mm-hmm. it may, and, and create a conscious thought pattern that I feel like shit right now. However, I know that my buddy Dave down the street is X, Y, and Z. And I wonder if I should connect him with somebody. How can yeah. I help him in his world? That's going to make you feel better. Or if, you th- if that person pops into your mind, set, give him a quick call or a quick text. Hey, I just thought of you. How are you doing? It yep. will automatically not only cheer him up, it will cheer you up too. Dude, yeah, I agree with that. That's actually really good. I, I, I had a you call. With, I had a call with my friend Lisa Fair. Um, I've known her for several years at this point. I haven't talked to her uh, since the last time she and I talked. She actually got pregnant, had her first baby. Um, and she and I had a great conversation yesterday. And I'm like, how are you? What's going on? And, you know, she and I just chatted for a little bit. And I just said, how can I help you? You know, is there anything I can do to support you? And she was like, oh, my God, like, I can't believe you would ask that. And I'm like, what? Why? You're my friend. Yeah. Uh, oh. Nobody does because nobody does. Or well, what, the- what is the challenge you're having? What's your biggest challenge right now? Is it good? Because when some people say, like, can I help you? Our instinct, if we're like, do it yourself, or are like, no, I don't need help. I got this. I can do everything on my own. Yeah. What's your biggest challenge? I absolutely, I'm going to take that, Jen. I'm sorry yeah. I'm going to say that publicly because that is an absolutely legendary yeah, comment right there. Be- it is such a simplistic thing to do. I mean, Gene, you're on the back end of 95. If, uh, no, actually, you're behind the scenes on 100% of the podcast these days. Yeah. And what is the one question we ask every single one of our guests? You're really good at it when we close up. Is there anything I can do for you? Yeah. Nice. How can I help you? Who can I connect you with? Yeah. You know, how can I benefit your business? How can I you're bring value to you? Can, you've, you've always been. See, I don't. I could care less. Yeah. I got enough shit to do, but you, you are very consistent with that. But I I wonder what would happen if you changed the question to what's your biggest challenge right now? I'll tell, I'll tell you what will happen. I, cause I know this from something else that I do on occasion. You know how, when you see somebody out on the street, you go, Hey, how are you? Yeah. I change that every once in a while. And I go, Hey, tell me one thing that's made you smile today. And, and it, here's what, here's what it does. It makes you go, wait a minute. Uh Yeah. Another positive interrupt. Right. So like, if I said that to you, it forces you to go, you know, my daughter was home from school today. She's off. It was nice to see her after, after eight o'clock. Yeah. Hmm. Cause I don't usually get that. Right. Like, and you're forced awesome. to think about something that makes you feel good. Right. Well, what you're talking about is exactly just is bringing people to the present. So about, uh, six weeks ago, there's this app that you can get on your phone and it's like a, it's like a reminder app. So I remind it goes off 10 times a day. 
So for 10, 10 times a day, it's like, um, it says, how are you feeling? But it's exactly what you're talking about. It's like an interrupt. So it forces me to be like, wait a minute, how am I, what, how am I feeling? And that's hmm. exactly what you're doing to people. It's like bringing them out of all their craziness that's happening. Cause we have all this shit in our head and it's like, wow, saying weird things. And it's bringing us right to like, what is happening now? This crazy bald man is in front of me asking me this weird question. Do I answer him? Do I not answer him? Do I punch him? But it forces, well, for, so first of all, I'll say it again for Howard because he's asking. And I, what, I, what I say is some version of what's one thing that's made you smile today instead of like, hello, I love how are it. You? right? That's great. But here's the, I will tell you one trick I have, Jen. I always stay at least an arm's length away when I'm asking. That. That's a good idea. Because if number three is you're going to hit me, at least I can duck. You know what I mean? I'm just saying you have a choice, James. Yeah. Got it. What made you, you smile know. today? Smack! Smack. 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 I got news for you. There are pe- pe- people that would, by punching me in the face, it would make them smile. That would be their answer. I mean, it would. I let me call my wife. See, let me get my wife. Here. Real quick. I'll, what do you think? I'll, yeah, I'll prove it. So, so let's do this, Jen. What is something that's made you smile today? Oh, I like it. Oh, I like it. Um, it. Oh, it was 40 degrees today when I woke up. That's a good thing? It's so good. Oh, my God. It was like <laughs> below 30 yesterday. It was freezing. So I was no. so happy. I was like, yay, because then I can walk because I live downtown. And so we have a co-work because at EXP, you know, we can work out of the Regis right. spaces. So we have a co-working space, but it's like 10 blocks away. And I'm so cold. Like, I keep my house at 78. I'm so cold. Damn. I know, but I'm so warm in there. And I still wear blankets, have blankets and stuff. Anyway, so <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's 40 degrees. Like, I have appropriate attire to walk 10 oh, blocks. No. Gene, what's made you smile? Uh, I had enough time to think about that. I've been pretty miserable today. Oh. Hi. No, I'm just kidding. Am I oh. ever miserable? I don't think so. But Is there I mean, anything I'm- to be miserable about, honestly? Nope. If you're ever miserable, go travel to a third world country. Uh, yeah. I, I don't even have to go that far sometimes. I just, I just, you know what I do? I just come, silly, through I, I come through on Facebook and I just watch everybody else bitch about their lives. And I'm like, yeah, it ain't so bad. So okay. here's, here's, here's the thing that I do when I'm having a rough day. And this is something for you guys for positivity mindsets. Like I love to get out and drive. I, I'll and I, I, I when I when I call my my uh, the wheels on my car are shoes. So when I get my the shoes are all clean on my car and my car, my truck's looking good. I mean, I will just get in my car. I'll turn up my music that I like, real, you know, really loud, and I'll just rock it down the Which freeway at a at hundred and ten miles an hour, literally, just fucking ripping past people, dropping it into sports mode, just just pe- just just rocketing, you know. Knock on wood, cops don't see me. Um, but I get out and I'll go somewhere completely private, and I'll mm-hmm. just be out and I'll get out of my car and I'll sit in a quiet place for a few minutes, and I'll just be grateful and thankful for the opportunity that I have to do that to do that action. And then I'll get back in my car and I'll drive back, generally pr- probably a lot slower, and I will just enjoy life. And I just, I just, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for that opportunity. And mm-hmm. I give thanks at every point in my life. I'm thankful for this podcast. I'm thankful for the air that I breathe. I'm thankful for the beautiful home that I've built for myself. I'm thankful for my <laughs> girlfriend. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I'm, th- I'm thankful for my furry little my furry little barfer, you know, who who terrorizes my life on a daily basis. But you know what? That guy That's your fault. He's I I feed him human food and it's my bad and I'm gonna stop. Um, but you know what? Here's the things. Everything in life is beauty. You just have to take the opportunity to see it. Once you see it through a different lens, everything around you will change. But too many of us don't do that because we're so consumed about being you know, pessimistic because we feel that's the way it's supposed to be done. When in reality, being a positive influence on someone's life will shift their life in ways you can never imagine. And you can just literally change thousands of lives just by being a positive human being. I'm not saying like goofy, cheesy, weird. Yeah, it has to be real and i think that that's yeah. that's the key like you can't like even when you're complimenting somebody if you decide that's what you want to do or you want to be gra- grateful or whatever you want to do if any of these tips it has to be like you, you it, yeah it has to be you and it has to be real it can't be fake what, like you can't do this greg you look you look great today greg <laughs> i can't see ya. <laughs> you look great greg you're looking great man <laughs> 
<laughs> you looking great. So handsome. Ugh, so handsome. <laughs> like, like that time I went in to get my picture taken at the DMV and she snapped the picture and went like this. Oh. <laughs> she went, do you want to take it again? I went, I guess I do now. I guess I do now. I'm like, what was that shit? That did not happen. I, I swear to God. <laughs> That's so, hilarious. Well, Jen, I'm really glad that you asked me what what made me smile today. I appreciate you asking. Yeah, you're um, welcome. <laughs> I'm glad you read my mind. It was telepathic. So, so here's the funny thing. My girlfriend and I were, were were laying in bed this morning. We're like exhausted. It's butt fucking crack of dawn. And <laughs> I'm I, glad I feel, he added I, that. I feel this like I, I feel this like rustling around next to me. Then I feel this big old arm just go boom, right on top of me. And she just laid her arm on me and just kind of snuggled in and started sniffing me. And that's not a oh. weird thing. If she was just trying to be cute and funny, but I mean, the whole thing is, is that you know that small action that she did, thumping her arm, her arm over my body when I'm laying there, and then just messing with me. It's so early in the morning, we're both super tired. That made my day. That made nice. me smile. You Aww. know. That's the kind of stuff, guys. Look for those small things. Oh, the little. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Everything that we said is like these. They're tiny things. It's crazy. It doesn't have to be anything big, but the tiniest little thing made the biggest difference. So, Dar so Darren Hardy, uh, if you guys don't know him, he was the past mm -hmm. editor of Su Success yeah. Magazine. Yeah. Um, he he told a story in one of his books that, I, that I've read multiple times about the fact that he was talking to a friend. They were at a party together. Um, they're going to pick up more ice or more beer or, or something from the store, right? Because the, the yeah. party was running out. And his friend goes, hey, brother. You, you know, I think I'm, I think I'm going to gonna get a divorce. And he's like, what? Hold up. Let, no, hold on. Why? And he went through a whole list of you know bullshit. And Darren said, okay, do you love her? Yes, I'd love her. Okay. This is what I want you to do for the next 365 days. I want you to take out a pen. I want you to get a nondescript little, you know, notebook like this. Mm -hmm. And for every single day, I want you to date it and time it and write in every one thing a day that you love and appreciate about your wife. It can be the way she did her hair, how she fixed the kid breakfast, how she, you know, backed the car out of the damn driveway, whatever. Right. Right. And the guy's like, do you think, really think that's going to work? And Darren's like, try it. And so his buddy's like, fuck it, man. Okay, cool. I mean, it's, it's my wife. Sure. I'll do anything for her. Right. So we started doing it within 14 days. His mindset has shifted 180 degrees going, that fast, huh? oh my God, because what he did, he, instead of looking for the negatives in life going, oh my God, she did this, blah, blah, blah. It would be more like, man, like Jackie, my girlfriend, she, she, she sprays something on her face to help her makeup stay where it's supposed to stay all day. I don't know what the fuck it is, but it smells absolutely amazing. And so I'm always grateful for that smell. So I, if I was that guy, I would have written that down. But mm -hmm. so, the, so the guy started and 14 days later, he started seeing his wife in a completely different light. Uh, their relationship started to improve. Uh, and 365 days later, he gave her this book about the things that he loved Aww. about her. Uh, can you imagine the crazy sex and the, in the waterworks? I mean, <laughs> that's it, awesome. But, but, but you can do that for yourself too. You, and this is what I was talking about for real estate agents. If you have a client that's driving you banana cakes, mm -hmm. go write one thing every time you meet them that you appreciate. Maybe they were on time. Maybe they, uh, you know, responded to your calls very Maybe you really like the house or you're happy your signs in the neighborhood because then you can get buyers. Exactly gratitude will shift everything but you have to look for it and it's there guys i mean i'm thankful to see bald gene three you know two times a week Aww. and this and this guy here's the funny thing this guy this motherfucker this guy i couldn't figure out who was posting on my facebook and all these ads and everything that i was doing and gene and i were you know busting each other's nuts <laughs> behind the show one day and uh, i said well gene what why don't you post for me he's like I have you, idiot, for the last three years. I'm like, <laughs> for three years, and you didn't even know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's, look, here's here's got to know about Greg. I had a real close friend of mine call me and say, "Hey, I was thinking about signing up for this new service," and and I go onto the website, and there's a video of Greg giving a testimonial, and he gives me the name of the service, and I'm like, "Nah, Greg doesn't use that." He's like, "Are you sure?" And I go. I've been talking to him three, four times a week for the last four years, and he's never mentioned it once. He goes, all right, I'll reach out to him. I said, I'm going to tell you what he's going to say. He goes, oh, really? I didn't know I had it. 
And that's exactly what it was. He called Greg and he's like, I saw your testimonial video on this thing. And Greg was like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, you know what? That's just me being grateful and thankful. And that's what we're, what we're all talking about here. That's and exactly what it sounded like. I got to be honest. It, 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 it really is. <laughs> I know it was. Um, so let's do this, guys. Let's wrap this thing up. We've been rolling hard for almost an hour. Uh, Jen, yeah, how'd that happen? I, dude, because we're fucking awesome. That's it's why. 52 minutes, dude. I In eight seconds. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jen, people, where they can get a hold of you for real estate, um, connect you to you know work with your downline with EXP and your mm -hmm. podcast. Where can people meet the amazing Jen? Oh, yeah. So the podcast is called Toe, the number two, Toe Podcast. You have to put the whole thing in there. But they, if they just go and Google Jennifer Mertland, like LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, I'll pop up and it's all in there. Um, or you can just call me or text me 513-400-1691. Beautiful. Now, the, the question that everybody's been texting me the entire show is, how do we get a hold of Gina Velope? How, what, what, who is that? Oh, God, I'm afraid to do this, but. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I got no. I was gonna tell you a funny story, but I think I'm no, 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 no. I, 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 Here's here's what I can't, and I I can't only because the person that I would <laughs> that I was telling it about might be watching, and I do, I I don't I don't want to do it to embarrass them. But okay. um, how about but, how about we uh, Bob from Remax was the individual? No, it's not because the story is is is, <laughs> uh, is specific enough where they would know. Believe me, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll tell you off air. So okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, you don't you don't get in touch with me. I'm all booked up. There you go. No, he's full <laughs> of shit, guys. Gene Volpe dot com dot com. Jenna Jenna Velope. Jenna Velope. Velope. Yes, there it is. Jen Velope. Yes, mm -hmm. that's where you get a hold of them. guys. GVI Media. Go ahead and check check it out. They do an insanely awesome job. Even though Gene fucking sucks at selling himself, I will do it for him. Literally. Uh, <laughs> uh guys seriously the back end not in a sexual way uh, of his is is incredibly powerful like the some of the stuff that they have uh that he works with on his back end um is i i i, <laughs> I know it, it, it the, we keep yeah. saying back end and we're just gonna get weird um <laughs> but it but it is absolutely incredible and he's a an amazing human being go reach out to him immediately if you want Thanks, marketing you know i love you too right i mean uh, everybody wants to know do you have a testimonial on his site greg He's gonna now. <laughs> yeah, I am now. <laughs> but I don't remember putting it there. It's so weird. <laughs> um, and for me, guys, if you guys want to reach out to me, I talk about EXP. We're not going to build the biggest downline. We're going to build the most profitable downline. Uh, I have some total assassins in my in my in my in my crew that I'm running with. I uh, can't really use a lot of names. One I can say is is uh, Glenn. Uh, twiddle out of Australia. We have the biggest downline in Australia right now, and we're growing leaps and bounds. And the stuff that they're putting out is insane. So, if you want to learn how to be the most profitable individual uh, in what you do, give me a call 925 915 1978 is the number. So, guys, Gene, Jen, you guys are both literally some of my favorite people to talk to. You guys make my cheeks hurt every time I'm around you. Um, if you guys are going to give us a review, give us a two, give us a, a five star, not a, not a two star. What? what? We're not what? done. Two star. I said, we're not, I said not a two star, but a five star, not a two star uh, on anywhere where you guys listen to podcasts. But Gene, you have an incredibly important job. What color are we putting on the boat today? Mm -mm. I got, let's go. Let's go pink. Ooh. Oh, we have never done a pink. Well, yes, we have. We've done a we've done a pink bow twice, but this is our third time doing it. Okay, that is our show, guys. There's a pink bow. If you guys like us and, and uh, you guys enjoy Jen, reach out to her. If you love Jean, reach out to Jean. But I, I appreciate you and love you for everything that you guys do. We could not do the show without you. Um, and I thank you, love you, appreciate you. And until next time, peace out, ninjas. We're going. <laughs>